Good morning. How are y'all doing this morning? Are y'all ready for service? Y'all ready to praise the Lord? All right. I just want y'all to agree in prayer with me this morning as we pray over the service. Lord, we love you. We thank you for who you are, God. We just love you for what you've done for us, Lord. We love you for the God that you are, the, the love you pour out for us, Lord. And we just love you for your presence, God. We thank you for just allowing us to be here today, God, in your presence. Lord, I ask that you just meet us here today just as you were in this building with us, Lord. And I just ask that you help us feel you today. God, that we know that you are here, Lord. And I ask that we hear your word today, God, not just not just with our ears, Lord, but with our heart, God, and allow us to apply it to our lives, Lord, allow it to fill our spirit, God. And I ask that you just be with us today, Lord, move in this service, move in this worship, Lord, and just have your way today in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody ready to praise the Lord this morning? Say this with me. Say, I have life because God breathed into me and because I have breath. I'm going to praise him this morning. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Lord, we lift our voices together in one accord. If I'm breathing, well, I praise him. So I'm praising you today. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Lord, we lift our voices together in one accord. If I'm breathing, well, I'm praising. So I'm praising you today. Let everything that hath breath praise ye. Go shake their hand. Let them know you're glad they're in the house of the Lord to worship with you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes we just need to be reminded why we love the Lord. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get upset with somebody. You can be a friend, a spouse. Sometimes you just have to sit there and tell yourself, I love them. I love them. I know I love them. You know, sometimes we get upset because we're human and we don't understand things. But we have to still remind ourselves, we love God. We love Him and He is so worthy. I mean, He is so much more than what we could ever give back. But your love and your acceptance of Him as your Savior and your worship, that's what we can give back. And so I think that's good enough to say I love the Lord and we're going to worship him this morning and we're going to tell him how good he is to us. Bye. 
y'all believe that, say, you are worthy.
can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me church this morning. How many of y'all think it's a good thing to be in the house of God? Amen. Yeah. Praise God it is. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer for some needs this morning. And we're, uh, uh, we prayed about a lot of stuff this morning in prayer meeting before service. Uh, we're going to take some uh, folks to the Lord this morning. Some people need some healing. Some people need direction. A lot of people traveling. We need some uh, protection on the road. Thank you, Sister Mary. And we're just going to pray some things through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's remember the days this morning for healing. And uh, uh, also, uh, let's pray for uh, uh, Sister Sandy, which is Jimmy's mom, for 
for healing in her body. Amen. How many of y'all know that uh, God is able? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is greater than any, any attack of the enemy. Amen. And, and God has the final say. Get that in your mind. God has the final say. Amen. Say that with me. Say, God is the ultimate authority. And he has the final say. Now, let me tell you. I want to tell you something this morning. God will not violate your will. Amen. Because the only way he knows he has true faith or true love coming back to him is if you willfully surrender that to him. So he will not, he will not surrender. He will not violate your will. But as long as we're willing to hear him, to follow him to the best of our ability. And how many of y'all know we're not any of us going to get it perfect. We're going to fall sometimes. And that's a learning experience. God helps us by his spirit. But as long as we're willing and obedient, the Bible says we eat the good of the land. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to tell you, God has good things for us today, and we need to agree on his word for these needs. So good to see Brother West with us already this morning. Amen. And uh, had that surgery uh, this last week, and uh, man, I didn't have any idea you'd get to be here with us this morning. We got him. We, he's on his high horse this morning. We got him propped up in the back there just to get him comfortable. But hey, Wes, we want to just pray for you this morning. I want to pray for you before we get into uh, prayer for these other needs this morning. But how many others say, well, I've got a, a need here that just want to signify by an uplifted hand. It may be somebody needs salvation, somebody needs healing, some direction in the workplace or whatever. I want you to know, God, uh, God, you're acknowledging him when you raise your hand. Amen. So I, I, you're saying, I need you, God, because I want you to take this need right here. God knows every detail about what you're lifting up right now. Amen. We uh, got some of the body that need prayers more. Sister Donna's going through some things. She took a fail yesterday. Lift her up again and mention her. But, there's different ones in the body going through some things and others that we know of. So how many of y'all believe God is able to touch everything? Yeah. Amen. His hand is not short that it cannot say. His ear is not deaf that it cannot hear. And that's why we're going to pray. Amen. So uh, Brother Kevin, won't you just go lay your hand on Wes's back there? We're just going to just uh, thank God for uh, bringing Wes through that surgery and believe God for total, complete, fast recovery. Everybody say fast. Everybody say God's a quick God. God's a fast God. Amen. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, the devil just, he's running out of weapons, y'all. Amen. Tried to, tried to stop. He, he would have loved you to just sit down and quit, Al. Amen. But you didn't. Amen. How many of y'all think, man, the enemy's been on the attack, but, yeah. but I'm not stopping in Jesus' name. We already win. We know who wins. Amen. So we claim it. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Brother West this morning. We thank you for hearing our prayers answering our prayers, Lord, for getting through that surgery. And Lord, with a good report on the other side of the surgery, we thank you that your hands were on the doctor's hands. No doubt about it. We thank you that more was accomplished in that time than, than what was even originally planned. And I thank you, Lord. We're believing in the name of Jesus for total and complete recovery speedily. Lord, you're a quick God. You're a, you're a fast God, Lord. And so you move, God, like no other. So, Father, touch those, those places in his back. Touch that incision. We pray, God, in every part that it would heal quicker than anticipated. And we thank you. We claim health and healing and that West be back to 100%. Everybody say 100%. We claim that. We rebuke every hindrance of the enemy. We pray it be speedily and be done in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Now, Father, we just thank you, God. I want y'all stand with me as we agree for these other needs. Hallelujah. Uh, take somebody by the hand if you feel comfortable. Hallelujah. And just say this with me. Say, Father, we come to you as a body of believers today. Part of your body upon the earth. And we thank you, Lord, that we have your word to stand on. So we do that now. We lift up to you every need, every request that was represented as we extended our hand to you or as we shared it with you in our heart. So, Father, we thank you that you're touching those things now. And by the power of God, we believe the mercy, the grace, the quickening of God is released right now to those that need it. Thank you, Jesus. You're still a healer. Thank you, Jesus. You're still a provider. We thank you, Lord, that you're releasing salvation to those that will receive it. And we claim every good and perfect gift for those, God, that will receive this morning. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I just thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy. We take authority over every attack of the enemy. We resist you, Satan. You have no say and you have no authority in the name of Jesus. 
So, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we apply the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, to every situation in need. We rebuke the devil. We resist him. And we thank you for the power of the Almighty God that is resting upon every situation. We pray for direction. We pray for protection. Lord, we even pray for correction where we need it. We pray for divine order and leadership. And, Lord, you bring everything into the path of recovery, God, and the glory to you. We thank you, Father. We praise you for it. We give you all, all, all that we have in praise and honor and glory and thanks to you today. And we just give you glory. We give you thanks for giving praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gerald, I know you just sat down, brother. But I just feel let the Lord pray for you this morning. Could I do that? Could you come stand with me? Hallelujah. Bubba, why don't you just put your hand on his back. Hallelujah. How many of y'all love and appreciate Gerald? Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father God, I just thank you right now for my brother. I thank you, Lord, for a faithful man. Faithful man. Lord, you said a faithful man abounds with blessings. It means it's, it's abounding. It's more than enough. So, Father, I pray, God, for the blessings of heaven. Lord, as your word declares, to abound in his life in every way. God, I don't know what he has need of this morning. I just know the compelling of the Spirit, the leadership of the Spirit to pray for him. So I pray wherever his heart is in need this morning. By the power of God, Lord, send the help of the Holy Ghost. Shift what needs to be shifted. Change what needs to be changed. Father, I pray for the healing of God, the protection of God, and the wisdom of God. And Lord, the encouragement of God. I rebuke every spirit of discouragement. And I pray that Gerald be lifted up. I pray that God in the days to come, there will be things of encouragement, God, and, and joy. Lord, seated into his life. God, things unexpectedly. I pray for unexpected joy events to happen. And God, I just pray that God, you'd read his heart. Lord, read his mind as he prays. And God, bring those things about which he desires. We just ask your blessings on him this morning. And I thank you for the leadership of your spirit. I thank you for loving him so much. God, you'd stop this service, God, to let Gerald know that you're thinking about him. So, Father, thank you for it. Bless him now. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. We love you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Glory to God. Well, say it with me. The Lord, He is good and His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Give Him a hand as you're seated this morning. The Lord is good, 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 good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, y'all want to give this morning? Amen. I'll give you a chance to give to the Lord. And, and as always, thank you so much for your faithfulness in the area of giving. And God bless you as you... Uh, you do your part. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you like it if, uh, uh, if the United States government was like God, that he said, hey, uh, this is what we need you to do, and this is what will bless you, but, but you just decide if, out of the goodness of your heart if you want to give your taxes. <laughs> That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that's a worldly kingdom. Amen. It doesn't give you a choice. God's kingdom that we're in as the children of God, He gives us a choice. Because He doesn't want any given that's not out of our heart. Amen. So everything you give, every penny is important. We thank you for that. It's what, it's what causes the work of God to go on the earth. And thank you for being obedient to the word and tithes and offerings. And I know God is measuring it back to you. With somebody that believes that, say amen. amen. So get whatever represents you. Give it in your hand. Let's speak a blessing over it this morning. Say this with me. Say, Father, I thank you. You are my provider, and I can fully trust in you for all the things of my life. In fact, you said, all my needs are met according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, Lord, today I give you back in seed an offering out of what you have provided for me. I give this portion, and I plant it in the house of God today with faith and joy and excitement knowing that a product is coming that a harvest is coming and it will come abundantly Lord thank you for the blessings that you have in store for this house, the kingdom and my house and I give you praise as I worship you with this offering in Jesus name Amen and Amen, Hallelujah, come on and give this morning as the Lord leads you, thank you for your giving God bless you
show you like in, you can see it happening when he wants you to do something and he wanted me to come in here and ask y'all today when you're in trouble when you're in need when you need healing and you need help where do you run where do you run when you're down and depressed where do you run do you go turn on TV do you go work in try to stay busy do you go get on your Facebook or TikTok or whatever it is. I don't even know what all the stuff is on there. But do you do something to find find yourself making your mind busy? Or do you run into the Lord? Proverbs 18 and 10. I'm going to read it out of a couple of different versions because I really like it. And I know we all know it. We know we, Pastor Mark says this around here all the time. But it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. That was King James Version. NLT says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to Him and are safe. And I really like to amplify it. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs to it and is safe and set on high far above evil. So I believe God is asking us today and wanting, wanting us to know when we need something, when we're in trouble, when we need help, when we're down and out, we need to run to Him because He is our safe Savior. Thank you. Good. That's good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Run to Him. Amen. Run to Him. Run to Him. That's where your answers lie this morning. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, man, I tell you, it's keep running to Him. Keep running to Him. Like Donna said, when discouragement comes, when, when attacks come, where, where do you run? You know, this life is not heaven yet. Amen. Not heaven. So we're going to go through some things. But what tells us that we're people of faith is where we run. If we run to Jesus. Amen. And you don't give up just because you, you, you fell down. Amen. You heard what I'm saying? I've been watching the PBR finals. Y'all know I, I used to ride bulls years ago, a long time ago. Amen. And uh, I still love bull riding. And that's the PBR finals right now. This is the final day. But, but some of them old boys, man, they've hit the ground hard. I mean, I mean, they've got bucked off. They keep coming back the next day. Keep coming back. And one ride makes up for all the difference. Jimmy, you didn't quit roping the first time you missed a loop, did you? No, you kept on going. Hey, man, you kept on. And I'm looking at a room full of people here that you're here, most of you are here, and you've had the opportunity to quit. Hey, Amen. How many of y'all just lift your hand and say, I've had the opportunity to quit. Hey, Amen. God can God God makes sure that He has enough. The Bible says you'll never be tempted above that which you're able. But with every temptation, makes some escape where, where you uh, be able to bear it. Amen. And through offenses, I mean, you can't have this many any church. You can't have this many people together where offenses don't happen. Amen. The opportunity for offenses, and we have to choose whether we get offended or the Bible says it like this: Great, great peace have they which love Thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. So we have to either choose the word or choose our feelings sometimes. I want to tell you, man, I'm looking at a bunch of people who have stood the test of time. 
And I want to thank you for not being quitters. Amen? For running to God. For running to God. Jolene was just in the hospital last week. Amen? And God ministered to her. I prayed with her on what day was that I prayed with her? Me and Donna called and prayed with her on Monday. And uh, gosh, I mean, I mean, she's in the hospital. She, I don't know. They were going to let me go home. And now, now I don't know. They said there's something else going on. Got to find an antibody. And then we pull up Wednesday night. She gets out of the car from the driver's seat, walks in here, and said, Man, they let me go. I said, God just did it. I, they didn't even send me home with any antibiotics. Amen. So I'm telling you. Amen. That's why, Jolene, you could have gave up. Because, said, well, it's my turn. Take me on home, God. And you know there's a time for everybody. But, but I'm telling you, thank you for being a fighter. Thank you for getting more days. You're sitting here as a testimony to the healing, recovering power of God this morning. Amen. And that's affecting lives this morning. Amen. Glory to God. God's good. Amen. He's faithful to His Word. Aren't you glad, God, this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jacob. Give Jacob a hand. Amen. Amen. Before we send the kids out, I'm going I'm to sing a couple of songs, if that's all right. And I think it's interesting that Donna was talking about running to the Lord. So I love this song. I hadn't done it in a long time. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are glad you know where to run? How many of y'all have ever run the other direction way too far? Oops. Everybody say, been there, done that, if you've been there, done that. Hallelujah. So let's see. I may have to adjust this volume when it starts. took off on my own I didn't need help from God or man but it doesn't take long in the wilderness to realize your life is a mess and you'll do anything to get back home again back in the wheel of the Father's love where there's always more than enough that's the only place I want to be Back in the wheel and on the right track Had my fill of turning back, you know Everything that I ever need Is back in the wheel Hallelujah! How many of y'all want to be in the will of God this morning? I was young, wanted to be free And you know, Daddy wasn't as smart as me so I loaded up my stuff and I headed for sin. Oh, but eating with pigs can get kind of rough and just a little bit of sin is more than enough. Well, this dummy went crawling to daddy again. Back in the wheel of the Father's love where there's always more than enough. That's the only place I want to be. Hallelujah. Back in the wheel and on the right track I had my fill, I'm turning back, you know Everything that I ever need Is back in the wheel Oh, back in the wheel of the Father I love this And I found the same road that let me out could lead me back to my father's house And when he saw me coming I found I was welcome still Back in the wheel Of the father's love Where there's always more than enough That's the only place I want to be Back in the wheel And on the right track Had my fill of turning back You know Everything that I ever need Back in the wheel Oh, back in the wheel Oh, back in the wheel Oh, back in the wheel Hallelujah, hallelujah Back in the wheel of the Father How many of y'all are glad to be there and want to stay there in the name of Jesus? Amen Oh, 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. One more. Got to do this one. Amen. How many of y'all glad Jesus rocked your world? When I was living in sin, all I ever sang was the blues. I didn't realize there was a better life I could choose. But Jesus came along and he changed my song, oh. And I've been ready to rock since my name's been on the road Yeah, I've been ready to rock Since my name's been on the road Oh, since Jesus came in Well, the devil, he had to go I hadn't sang the blues Since I heard the news Jesus can save your I've been ready to rock since my name's been on the road. Anybody awake out there this morning? Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and changing my life. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All the old has passed away. All things become new. Amen. Well, I've been so happy. With this new joy I've found Well since Jesus took His holy book And He wrote my name down Well every time I think about it Glory hits my soul I've been ready to rock Since my name's been on the road Anybody? My name's been on Stand and rejoice that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life today Well, since Jesus came in Well, the devil, he had to go Hallelujah, I, I don't sing the blues I hadn't sang the blues since I heard the news Jesus can't save your soul I've been ready to rock Since my name's been on the road Johnny, be real good If he just found what I found I've been ready to rock Since my name's been on the road Well, since Jesus came in And the devil, well, you had to go Hallelujah Glory to God. I had to say I've been ready to rock since my name's been on the road. Oh, oh, oh. I've been ready to rock since my name's been on the road. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody give me praise. Aren't you glad your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life this morning? Amen. Glory yeah. to God. Let's say praise the Lord. For he is good, and his mercy endures, 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 and his mercy endures. Hit me on back, and his mercy endures. Hit me on back forever. Amen. Glory to God. Aren't you glad for that? You remember what His mercy and His grace is? His grace is when we get things we don't deserve. Like heaven. Amen. Like healing. All those things we don't deserve. He just gives it to us anyway. Mercy is when we don't get what we do deserve. We deserve the rest of the stuff. 
But his mercy said no. By the blood of Jesus. By the, I, I wipe it away. Amen. And by the grace, by the, I empower you to live an overcoming, conquering life by my power. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, the greatest power is the Spirit of God. That by His grace, He's made available to me to defeat the death, hell, sin, and the grave. I am an overcomer. Not in me. I have nothing in myself. But I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of my testimony. Yes. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Well, you may be seated. We're going to send the kids out to Holy Ghost Town today, ages 3 to 12. Y'all have a great day in Holy Ghost Town. Everybody say, bless them real good, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Josiah's going for his second stand at this deal. Amen. It was adventure the first time. Let's pray for Patricia and, and Virgie right now. No, no, they're good kids. Amen. Praise God. How many of y'all know God's faithful? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't normally do this because it's a danger zone on Sunday morning, but uh, I'm about to preach, so you're going to have to preach. But does anybody have a testimony of something great God's done? You just got to say something about it. Come here, Christy. Come up here. I'm going to give you the mic. Amen. That's good. I like that. I like that enthusiasm. Amen. Praise God. Well, good. But you didn't know. Oh, and I'm, I hate to hear my voice on the microphone. Um, um, I just want to give God all the glory for my all, my family, my husband, my my children. Um, my oldest son uh, is in prison, and we just found out that he made parole. Yeah, <laughs> and that has been a, a a prayer just ongoing. Um, just the restoration that God has has brought back to my family. My husband and I reunited. We bought a house, and it's just been in a, sh in a few short months, se seven months, six or seven months. But um, I just give all of that recognition to Jesus Christ and Lord, my Lord God, our Father. He is so, so, so good to us, and we love Him so much. So I'm just expecting. I come expecting. Every time I come expecting something from God. Lord God. So, thank you, Jesus. Somebody rejoice with Chris this morning. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And you know what you just did, Christy? You opened up God's GPS. Because he said you acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct your paths. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Well, somebody say glory to God. Well, we're going to get to the word this morning. Grab the grab your Bible and stand with me, if you will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God's doing things. Amen. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, just move by your spirit today. Move by your spirit today. Hallelujah. Move by your spirit today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm excited about what God has laid upon my heart because this is a message I'm preaching to you today. It's, a, it's one of uh, that these kinds of messages is uh, what I heard a lot when I was a teenager. And man, it, it, it really let me know that, that God didn't, God put me here for a purpose. Amen? Amen. We all know uh, we're not just here to survive and then die and hope for the best. And no, you're here, you're designed by the hand of God. You were put here for a purpose. Amen? And nobody can do that design for your life like you can. That's why we all look different. That's why we all act different. God's such a creative. How did he come up with this many looks for all these many people? That's what I'd like to know. Amen? How in the world? But he did it. Amen? He's creative God. And so, but he's got a unique, unique thing for every one of us to do. And so, in my desire as a pastor, I want everybody to find their thing. Amen? Because where your thing is, is where your joy will be in your life. Amen? And there's nothing that can give you that. You notice I said joy, not happiness. Happiness can be fleeting. Happiness is an emotion. And God can blend it, throw some happiness in there too. Amen? Happy is a man whose God is the Lord. Amen? But, but let me tell you what. Happiness is there when things are good. Joy is there no matter where, when things are going good, when things are going bad. 
And the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I want you to have joy, and you'll know that if you know that you have a purpose and God's put you on that path of purpose. Amen. So how many of y'all are glad of that today? Amen. Well, take your Bibles with me. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me over to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Back in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 16. And it's a story I've preached out of and, and, uh, and uh, uh, many times, and, and uh, we're going to go a little different route with it today. But let's read uh, here. I'm, I'm still holding that mic. Let me, let me get this other one on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Samuel. First Samuel. <laughs> You'll be looking for that one the next hour. Amen. <laughs> First Samuel uh, chapter 16. Let's start with verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves. And come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's, the Lord's anointed is before him. But Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abimadad and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammai to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, God, for the, your word is spirit and his life. And Lord, I thank you for the leading of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just have your way today. Lead us into, and guide us into your truth today. And Father, I thank you that, Lord, there sits before me people here that got to have a desire for you. Because, Lord, they wouldn't be here if they didn't. And Father, every one of us are on that, on that uh, journey, that path of, of choosing roads and and Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that there be just anointed vision given. I pray that you'd, you'd uh, give every one of us a new set of glasses today. Help us to see like we haven't seen. Help us to recognize like we haven't recognized. Because Father, our days are limited here on the earth. But Father, you have an assignment. You have a purpose for every one of us. And God, we pray that God, all of us today, would hear the voice behind the words. That we might be in the moment right now. And, and grasp the moment you want us living in right now, Lord, so we might be positioned, God, to go forward and accomplish all you've called us to do. Lord, anoint this message as it goes forth. Lord, anoint, God, and let us hear your voice. And we just submit it to you and thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. You may be seated. And everybody said, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Story of Samuel going to anoint, uh, of course, uh, the king because Saul had turned his back. Bottom line is... Uh, the prophet Samuel gave Saul, the king of Israel, the direction in battle that he was to go into a country in the land and, and uh, uh, go and, and uh, uh, you know, to, to annihilate every bit of it. I mean, everything that lived. And, uh, uh, but 
Saul went and attacked. They had victory over the land. But he saved the best cattle. He saved some of the things and said, well, I've done it to sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Bible even tells us that, that a, a, a Saul went and sacrificed to the Lord. Well, that wasn't his place to do. That was the, the, the priest and the prophet's job to do. Amen? So how many of y'all know when we get out of obedience to the Lord, we can start doing things that are not in order? Right. Oh, I didn't get enough amens on that. Amen? How many of y'all know when we get out of uh, 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 obedience to the Lord that we start doing some things out of order. We all do. Amen. And so Saul did that. Well, well, it was such a such an abrupt thing of disobedience. God lifted his hand of anointing on Saul and, and sent Samuel to anoint a new king. Now, it wasn't going to happen overnight, uh, but he went to the house of Jesse here in Bethlehem, called the sons. We just read the story. And David, the youngest, pulled was pulled up from the sheepfold and anointed. And everybody knew when, when Samuel the prophet poured that oil over David, everybody in that house, they knew the Jewish customs. They knew the customs of the law. They knew exactly what was happening. You can imagine uh, the, uh, the pride that was having to be swallowed by the big brothers in that room. Amen? As David was anointed to be king over Israel. You say, where'd he go? Directed to the palace? He went right back to the sheep. Amen? But there was a time. Everybody say, there was a time. There was a season. Where David came to the place to fulfill what God had called him to do. And I want to encourage you today. If you feel like you're being unfruitful for God. You say, when is, when is the things you put in my heart, God, going to happen? Or God, I, I'm searching for what my purpose is in life. Be encouraged today. Let me tell you, as David sat in the sheep field before Samuel came along. I, 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 can, I can guarantee you almost of two things. For one thing, David had no idea he was going to be called to be the next king. But yet, I know how God works. And there was already stirring within his heart that God would take him to a greater place than he'd ever been before. God was forming in him as he worked with those sheep the preparation for what he would need to do and what he would need to be as the king of Israel. So don't begrudge where you are right now. How many of y'all know people get in a mess when they try to help God out with His timing? If you don't believe me, ask Sarah and Abraham. Amen? Well, God promised a child, but it's not happening. So Abraham, why don't you just take the handmaid and go have a baby with her and, and we'll help God out here. So Because He said we were going to be a father and mother of many nations, so let's help her out. And Ishmael was born. Amen? Because they got out of the timing of God. You see how that develops? Now we have... Now we have Arabs and Jews fighting all the time over there. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Talking way down generation. Now we have Arabs and Jews fighting. Why? Because somebody wanted to help God out. Amen? God redeemed us. God still made it right. Still gave them the child, the promised child, Isaac. Amen? But I'm telling you, God has perfect timing. Everybody say that. Say, God has perfect timing. And if you will position yourself in God, hear me, position yourself in God, He will expand Himself to you. I thought it was very unique last week when we did the, the water example, you know? And we poured that, that water in that vase about pouring our life into God. We have a choice. We either pour our lives into ourselves or we pour our lives into God. How many of y'all remember that? I don't know if you're sleeping through it or what, but y'all remember that? And, and I remember as we poured, continued to pour, then it eventually overflowed. And we had that, that bowl with that red vase that re represented our life and poured into the, the blood of Jesus and, and his life. And when it overflowed, it came up. And, and I thought it was unique after service. Caitlin came up to me and said, man, I noticed something. He said, as you poured and that overflowed into that other vase, he said, it, you know how water does. It expands things. You, that red vase that was in there that we poured into recently, it visually became bigger. I thought, man, that'll preach right there. Amen? Because God will expand things beyond the natural. The size of that vase was the same, but the appearance of it was much greater. And God can do so much at the right time. If we will allow Him the opportunity to invest our time in Him, He will have a time of overpouring. Look, Samuel took that oil and he poured it on David. There's an overflowing season coming. 
Hear me this morning. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Say this. Say, if I stay in God, if I stay with His sheep, good one right there. Amen. God has appointment of an overflowing anointing coming to my life. Say that. Say, God has an appointment of an overflowing anointing coming to my life. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm not trying to call everybody into being a pastor or a teacher. or a man. No, I'm telling you, God has put us all here to function in different roles in this life. And we need anointed people in every role of this world to function properly. We need anointed law officers. We need anointed authorities. We need anointed people that, that get your electric bill and file it in the right place. How many of y'all know we need somebody to do it right? We need anointed people to take your money at the gas station. Well, they don't do that anymore. But any, anyway, anyway. But, but hey, we, we need people in every position of life. And God has calling and anointing for every one of us. Would somebody say amen? amen. So all that was my introduction to say this. My message title today is called, appointed, and anointed. Called, appointed, and anointed. Everyone has this assignment on their life. But many never respond to the call. Amen. And I'm talking about ministry. Yes, I am. Because every one of you have ministry in your life. Amen. We all are called to ministry. You may not be called to the five-fold ministry. But let me tell you what. You're called to ministry. And you can minister right where you are. Yes. And God wants to use you in that. And there may be some in here you, you haven't considered it. But God may have an appointment for you to be called in five-fold ministry. Amen? Man, as a, young, as a young man, you know, got filled with the Holy Ghost, was serving in the church. You know, I'll tell you what I wanted to do. I wanted to play bass. That's what I wanted to do. I was happy just playing bass. Amen? And then my pastor came to me one day and said, Look, Lord showed me that you, you, we're going to be starting to train you and put you in a position to be the praise and worship leader. I said, What? I don't want to do that. I thought, I don't have the ability to do that. You know, and, and but, but he pushed me into that position. That's what Brother Johnny Glory had something for him. But anyway, he pushed me to that position. And I developed in that. And I got confident in that. And one thing led to the other. I would never be standing before you today if I hadn't made myself available in the house of God and waited for the appointment time. And that was, that was a, a step in a direction that I didn't think I would ever be doing. Amen. God may have some things up in your, your future that you don't think you'll ever be doing. But God knows you better than you know yourself. Because when He made you, He put some stuff in you that you may not have discovered yet. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So God has anointed. Say this with me. Say, God has. Call me. And God will. Appoint me. And then God can. Anoint me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And listen, when I'm talking about ministry, everybody has ministry. Let me define ministry. Some people view ministry as I'm the guy with the microphone. Now, let me tell you what. There's ministry going on in the South. When, when you are, which I do this too, when I'm vacuuming the floors, I'm ministering to you too. Amen. When you're cleaning the commodes, you're ministering to people. When you're just loving on people, going over there and, and, and you pull up in the drive-thru and you buy the meal of the person behind you and you don't even know them, but God spoke to your heart to do it. Amen? You're ministering to people. Amen? What is ministry? It's serving. Amen? True ministry is not a platform and a spotlight. True ministry is serving. Amen? Y'all remember when Elijah uh, went and chose Elisha and he walked with him. It said that Elisha became Elijah's minister. In other words, his servant. Amen? Jesus came what? To serve us. To, to, be, uh, to bring himself down that he might serve us. He was the greatest servant of all. And the Bible says when you serve others, God will exalt you. If you, if you uh, humble yourself, you shall be exalted. God will bless you for it. But let him do the exalting. How many people have I seen in my lifetime that, that uh, uh, oh, they had a desire, they had some abilities, and, 
And uh, sometimes talent and abilities can be a, a opportunity to get off because, man, uh, maybe they can speak, maybe they can play, maybe they can they can talk real good, and they and they get they get they don't wait on the timing of God and they get out of timing. And I've seen lives crumble and fall and get mad at God because of the timings off. Trust the timing of God because when God's in it, He will make it happen and it will, it will be there to last in the name of Jesus. How many of y'all want something that's going to last? Yes. How many of y'all got married and decided, well, we'll try this for a while and see how it works? No. Not this time. No, not this time. Right, exactly. Got some honesty in the house of God this morning. Amen. Amen. Man, you better mend what, mend what you said before God. Amen. We're in this thing for good. We're committed. We're in covenant with one another. Yes. Amen. And we're in this thing with God for good. Amen. Let's, let's trust Him. He knows what He's doing with our life more than we know. And somebody say amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. So the first thing I want to talk to you about for a few minutes is the calling of God. First of all, we're all called. How many of y'all know what is the first call that goes out to our lives? Every one of us. Jesus knocks on the door and says, come, come. Can I come in? Mm-hmm. Amen. He doesn't force himself in. Well, by, by golly, if, if I can't get one on the door, I'm going to knock a window out and I'm going to get it. No, Jesus is not that way. Jesus is a gentleman. He knocks at the door of our heart and he requests to come in. He's calling. It's like a door when we're at home doing our stuff and, and uh, uh, you know, there's not that many people knocks at your door anymore, but your phone rings. You get a call. You have to determine, well, I'm going to ignore that thing till later. Or you answer the call. We make the same decisions that we make with our cell phone with God. And aren't you glad that you're saved today because you answered the call of the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That He prompted your heart. He knocked on the door of your heart. He said, will you let me come in? I am what you need. You said, man, I can't, I'm living a lie, but I can't do this no more. My own Lord, I know you created me. There's more for me out there. So, Lord, come in. Forgive me my sins. Take my mess. Make it a message. How many of y'all are glad that you responded to the call of God to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? And that's the beginning. Then God begins to mold you and make you. For you, you may be a factory worker. You may be a truck driver. Uh, you, there's all kinds of facets in life you are. And I'm not just talking about professions. You know, you can be a truck driver and be a grandpa too. Amen. Right, Mike? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a lot of facets in life. And God places a call upon us right where we are to be fruitful in the field that we're planting. Would somebody say Amen. David got anointed to be king, was sent right back to the sheepfold, and was found faithful. Yet there was this call on his life. What did he do? He spent his time being busy in obedience to his natural father. Practicing what? To be obedient to his spiritual father. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 20. I'll read a couple of verses over to Matthew. Everybody say while you're turning, I'm called of God. Say there's a calling on my life. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 20, look at verse 16. So the last shall be first, and the first last. Now let me just remind you of another scripture that says, uh, if you try to exalt yourself, you'll be abased. But if you humble yourself... (coughs) You shall be exalted. Amen. It says, when you go to a ruler's table, don't go sit at the head of the table. Sit at the end of the table so that the ruler can call you up if he wants you up there. Amen. Let somebody else sing your song of praise. Amen. How many of y'all know we all deal with it? There is way too much pride going on in this world. How many of y'all know that is the number one issue of the root of sin is pride? Yes. Amen? Amen? Well, man, my wife shouldn't treat me like that. And you know, man, God, I deserve better than that. Now, this lady over here can offer me something, you know, better. And God knows I deserve better than that. So see. Amen? 
And all the thought is, me, 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 me. Oh, I thought when you promised to that one, I thought you said you were going to sacrifice everything. You'd be there through better or for worse. Amen. Amen. I'm just using marriage covenant because it's a covenant relationship with God too. Amen. Amen. That means like Pastor Donald was saying this morning, when discouraged seasons, don't get mad at God. Amen. Amen. And look to another avenue for your comfort. Stick with God. He will make it worth your while. I promise you. Amen. Why? Because let me tell you, God's already ruined your party. Amen. You are the called of God. Nothing out there will ever make you happy again. Amen. It will be a temporary little thing that will be gone. That's right, devil. I'll say it again. It's a temporary little little thing that will be here and gone like that. Oh, but God gives pleasures without sorrows. You are the call of God. Receive your calling and run with it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now look, read on the scripture. It says, so the last shall be first, the first shall be last. For many be called, but few chosen. How many of y'all know the call for salvation is going out to every man, woman, boy, and girl? But the Bible says, Jesus said one time, you've not chosen me, I've chosen you. But you know what that means? It means I've put it in your heart, the ability to accept me. And that word chosen is kind of a two direction. It's a two way street. Yes, Jesus has chosen you because he's chosen to send his word to you. But that call goes out to all. But who will choose him? Amen. Amen. Who will choose him? Hallelujah. I had a choice to make in ministry, you know, 22 years ago. Because I was doing what I always wanted to do. This was beyond the, the bass player days. My, uh, that was, we had this gospel group was going around. Man, we've seen people saved. It was great. I wanted to do that until Jesus came. I've given you all that testimony before. But I'm telling you, then God started dealing with us. Amen? About the call in our life. We knew there was shifting coming. But it took some sacrifice. And it took us a year to put it on the altar and to thank God that God's patient with you. He gives you time. Amen. When he's dealing with your heart. He and to say, to, to finally, amen, it took me. I'm hard-headed. You know, I want my way sometimes. Anybody else like that? Yeah. Amen. amen. And, and man, but it took me a year. But man, when I finally, when I finally said, God got to that point, that Gethsemane uh, point. I said, God, not my will, but your will be done. Oh, my gosh. It was like, it was like. God was holding back this herd of wild horses. And the moment I released that, it was like the gate swung open. And, oh, this release of, oh, God, when you answer the call of God to do whatever you're doing, you know, in your life, and you answer his leadership, oh, peace comes. Amen. I didn't have all the answers. I had no answers, as a matter of fact, for, for what we were going to do. I just knew God was calling us to pastor, and I didn't know where. I didn't know how. I didn't have a desire up till yesterday, you know, whatever. But, but here it is, man, God, at the moment I said yes to that call, the flood of ideas and dreams, and, and it just, poof, it was there. I mean, and it's kind of like this. When you get used to walking under the cloud and under the fire every day, and the cloud goes a different direction, but you want to keep going this direction? Oh, you might can make some things happen down here, but it ain't the same. I had to get back under the cloud. I had to get back under the fire. Because once you've tasted of that anointing, you want to follow the call of God. Amen? And that's for whatever the call of God is in your life. Let me tell you what. God is for, God is doing things in your life. David McCorvey, you have no idea what God may have in store for you. Be open because God may use you in ways you never thought you'd be used before. You may, you may be praying for people in a marketplace in a bold way, and you're going you're gonna to look around in the middle of it and think, what have, what have I become? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Become a child of God. And I'm not saying that prophetic. I'm just saying, be ready. You never know. The calling of God is on every one of our lives. Would somebody say amen, amen and amen. amen? And listen, when you call, you have to, when there's a call, you have to hear it to respond. Mm -hmm. Amen? I've got my phone turned down right now. 
So I've decided I'm not receiving any calls right now. Amen. We're in the middle of church. After church, I'm going to turn it back up. Hopefully I'll remember. Some of y'all know I don't always remember. Amen. <laughs> and then when it calls, I will hear it and I'll respond. How many of y'all know faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God? How many of y'all know we'll never hear the direction of our call if we're not in the word of God? Yes. Personally and with the body in church. Yes. Amen. We have to position ourselves to hear the word of God. Belief and hope causes you to hear. Amen. Belief and hope causes you to hear. Why have you come to church today? Because you're in belief and hope that you will hear something today. You will experience something today that's going to change, change something in you. Stimulate your life spiritually that you can walk out of here with something you didn't have before. Amen. Am I right? Yes. Amen. Because that's the power of God. That's what He can do in the Spirit that none of us can do for ourselves in the natural. Amen? Calls, now listen to this, calls are recognized sometimes, many times by our desires. Amen? All of a sudden, you're going to find yourself desiring to go lay hands on people. You're going to be desiring to go pray. Let me tell you, you, you know, uh, brother. one thing I can say about Brother Mike, there's no doubt about this. There's other things in his life. One thing that man is called to do, without a doubt, is to pray. Why? Because he, he's got a desire to pray. Yes. Amen? God has a desire. He will give you the desire to do what you are called to do. God, as he said, he'd give you the desires of our heart if we, uh, what? If we, if we, uh, 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 if you, we, help me. If, if we, uh, uh, about the ways of the Lord, help me. Delight yourself. Thank you. That's fair. If you delight yourself in the ways of the Lord, He'll give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because if we're delighting ourselves in God's ways, we're going to have right desires. Yes. And we're going to see ourselves doing things that God would have us to do. Like Donna, Donna said earlier, the Bible says the Spirit shows us the things to come. Amen? When I was, when I was seeking in that season and, and I had responded to the Lord, uh, you know, the first thing I did, and here's, a, here's an element of wisdom for your calling. Amen? When God spoke to us about pastoring, I finally gave in to that and said, Lord, okay, if that's what you want us to do, I'll, I'll pastor. And, and, and release that to the Lord. Immediately I knew what to do because the Bible says by the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. Especially when we recognize that God wanted us to start it over here. I had some pastor friends in this area. And I did not want to create a division. So I called my pastor friends in this area and said, Lord, I feel like this is what God's putting on my heart. I want to know how you feel about it. And there was a green light from everyone that I, that I called. I didn't do it out of, out of trying to start something to pull anybody of their, of their people. Amen. But then I called my pastor, which is Brother Johnny Lawrence. And this is what he said to me. He said, do what you see yourself doing. Amen. What do you see yourself doing? Amen. And I followed that. Do what you see yourself doing through the desires of your heart. God will show you the things to come by His Spirit. Look, I'm not preaching no elementary message this morning. How many of y'all know this message is for those who truly want to serve God and develop into all that God has called them to be? I'm not sitting here calling anybody in the ministry. I don't call anybody in the ministry. That's God's business. But I can tell you this. Whether you become something in a five-fold ministry capacity or not... Every one of you are called to the ministry. Every one of you have ministry in your life. And we need to respond to what God is calling us to do and how he wants us to minister. Would somebody say amen? amen. Now desires are part of it, but desires are not the only thing. It's coupled with that attitude of serving. If our desires just are, are so we can be exalted or put in a place to be seen, then that's not ministry. It's not serving. It should be about the body and about serving the people and the things of God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John 16 and 13, you don't have to, to go there, but that's the scripture that says the Spirit will show you the things to come. And what you see yourself doing, do it. And it's usually, y'all, usually it's a driving force in you. <laughs> amen. The Spirit is a driving force inside of you. And God will confirm it. He'll confirm it how? By the witness of the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, and also by prophetic voices in your life. 
Amen? Yeah. Let me tell you what, man. I, you know, the Bible says, in fact, go to, go to Timothy. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Timothy was a young minister. He was a spiritual son of Paul's. Paul had brought him up and poured into him and in the spirit. And, and uh, this is what, as, as Timothy was set over uh, a body of believers here, this is what Paul said to him in 1 Timothy 1 and 18. It says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them might war... My, mightest war a good warfare. Amen? Pay attention. If God speaks prophetic words to you, pay attention to them. I got an old Thompson Chain Black Bible at home. And every time I have, I have received a word, a prophetic word of God from a minister or somebody that has spoken my life and I knew that it rang something in me, I got home as fast as I could, opened that Bible up and wrote down every detail I could remember. And I've looked back over that from years and I can't tell you what it does to see almost all of those things, almost all, not all, almost all of those things be fulfilled in my life. I remember one time I was standing in a, in a I don't know how far we'll get on this, y'all just pray. Is this all right this morning? Because I want y'all to fulfill God's call in your life. I remember a church was over in McGregor, Texas and and uh, uh, serving there and on the platform and everything. I, in, and I had a bunch of junk going on in my life at the time. But anyway, but I was serving God. I was loving God and just a lot of other stuff going on. But uh, but uh, this minister came. I didn't know him from Adam. Never, never, never seen him before. And he he uh, uh, called some of us up in a prayer line. I was standing there and he got to me and he stopped. Man, he started reading my mail. I mean... He was telling me, and he told me the things that were going on in my life that I didn't even want to admit. Amen. And and uh, but it was it was it was personally between me and God. You know, I didn't have to admit it to everybody else. It was God let me know. I've sent this guy because he's just telling you everything that nobody knows but me and you. And so he had my attention. I knew the Spirit of God was moving. And he began to speak prophetic things to me. What I mean by that, he was telling me, he said, he said, wasn't you up here on the platform? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, God's going to begin to give you songs in the future. And he said, that's not going to, not going to be overnight. He said, I want you to, to, uh, uh, you need to, to, to share them with the body because they will be a blessing to the body. And, and he said, he said, I see you, I see you on these portable stages uh, here and there with different, different people ministering. And I thought that time, I don't know. I ain't never wrote a song in my life and I don't plan on it. You know? Well, lo and behold, man, years later, man, I wrote a song. We, we, did, we did several albums with Minister of the Eastern Sky. I wrote a lot of those songs on there, shut them with the body. We had saw people get saved. And, and I want to tell you, a lot of what we did was, was rodeos, fairs, uh, cowboy churches. We did a lot of things on portable stages. And, you know, I forgot about some of that until late years later. And I looked at those prophecies. Man, man, God, you're letting me know by the call of God, follow those things which God puts upon you. And it's different for everyone. I can only share my experience with you. Amen? For what God called me to do. But there's calling in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. I haven't discussed it in detail, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not here. But think about the things that, that God has brought you through. The things that God has delivered you from. Amen? And we're not always stuck in the, the, the calling of what our troubles laid in. But yet, if we've got victory over an area, yeah. and we can see the help of that vein into somebody else, yeah. there may be a good chance that God is going to use you in that way, if not on a platform situation, on a one-in-one -one situation, because God, if you're giving God the glory for it, let me tell you what, He's going to give you the opportunity to glorify Him with the victory that He's given you. Y'all hear me this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And there's all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will never... Oh, let me see. Let me back up. Father, thank you for checking me in, Holy Spirit. I can by the help of the Holy Spirit because He knows everything. 
but I'll never, I can minister to them through that phone. I'll never be able to relate to somebody that has been in war like David can. Amen? Why? He's been there. And if someone is carrying some baggage, which so easily comes with that, there's something David, when David speaks to him, it's going to mean something because he's been there. Amen. I'm telling you, the, the talents and abilities, the giftings in your life, you know, some of y'all, man, you can talk all day. Amen. Y'all are, get, you got the gift of gab. Amen. You can talk your way in. Out. We knew this, we had this friend of the family. Uh, one time they they burnt man and that guy he could he could literally sell an igloo uh, to to a Eskimo. Eskimo. Yeah, I mean he could sell a pocket knife to a lumberjack. I mean that guy he was just he could talk. And we got to recognize our 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 callings, you know, and our giftings. But don't let them think. Don't ever think that they're the strength of your life. Amen? 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 Musicians are the world's worst. Because pride comes in that road, I can tell you. You can get off on that thing so easily. Amen? But you got to hone it in. Give it to God. No matter what your abilities are, give it to God and He will call you in the direction He has for you to go. How many of y'all are thankful that you're called of God this morning? Would somebody say amen and amen and amen? And it's usually a driving force. I'm trying to help you locate some things that may be calling in your life. Amen? And head toward them. Amen? And remember the prophecies. If the Lord speaks something to you, there's many of you I've spoken words over before. I hope that you will remember those things. Amen? I'm talking about in, in moments where we're in prayer and the Spirit of God prompts something and speaks by His Spirit. We need to remember those things. Amen? And take note of them and head in those directions where God wants us to go. Because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, Romans 11 and 29 says. That means if He put it on you, He will never take it back. No matter how stupid or disobedient we get, the call will always be there for us to pick it up and go do it. Amen? The devil's always feeding us this line. Man, you done blew it now. You mean God's done with you. He's given you enough chances. Yep. You know, it's, you're about out of hallway passes, you know? No. God's looking. We just read it today about the anointing of David. God's not looking on the outward. He's looking on the heart. Yes. Anytime we approach God with a true heart, say, God, I want to be used of you. God, I, I know there's <laughs> calling in my life. And no, there might be some of you very young and some of you very old saying, I, I don't even know what my calling is. It's not too late to receive your call from God. And let me tell you what, what you're called to do in one season, just like my own life and Donna's life, what we were called to do in one season could change in another season. Yes. Amen. Respond to what God is saying now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, I believe we got, we got four teams of couples that clean the church. Amen? And I believe they were called to do it. Amen? You know why I know they're called? I never hear one complaint. I didn't go ask them and twist their arm and say, you know, we put out the need, they responded, and we prayed about it and said, okay, man. That's easy. And man, I'm telling you what, that's a, that's a work that gets done awesomely around here. Amen? And not that that's all those people do. Every one of them do more than that. But I'm telling you, we need to be responsive to every call that the Lord puts on our life. Would somebody say amen? Anybody bored this morning? No. Calling. Everybody say calling. calling. Say I'm called of God. Calling. Just like David was called from the shepherd's field. And the calling to be king was put upon his life. He did not go out and be king right then. He stayed faithful to where he was until the appointment came. After you're called and you submit it to the Lord and you keep your ears open 
and you seek the face of God on the things He's called you to do, you pursue it with faith and open ears and open heart, God will bring an appointment to your life. Amen? An appointment. Right in the middle of that word appointment is point. How many of y'all are glad when you feel like God is saying, go do that? Yes. Oh, thank you, God, for letting me know. Amen? Yes. How many of y'all been reading the Word before? And it's like God said, go do that. Ah, that's what it is. That's what I need to do. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes God will point to somebody or, or something in the Word. And He said, oh, God, are you sure that's where you're pointing? Huh. You know, you know. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you and say, oh, man, or me about you. Do good, you know. Don't return evil. Don't return evil for evil, but good for evil. Yeah. When God tells you to go tell somebody you love them and, and uh, ask for forgiveness when you, it was them in the wrong. Ouch. Say, God, please, just point to this one. You know? No. There's appointments. Amen? God has appointed times in our life. There's a point in time for every facet of our life. Amen? And you never know when those appointments... Keep your God appointments. You might miss it if you miss your appointments with God. Amen? Yes. Every time you put yourself in the presence of God with Him and with His people, I'm telling you, there are opportunities for Him to speak. See, I'm trusting, as I'm talking about this this morning, there is desires of calling being stirred up in you. Some of y'all have, have decided, well, we're just, just going to live your life on out here and, and uh, see what comes. But God wants you searching. God wants you knowing there's more. God wants yes. you desiring it yes. so that you'll be looking for it. So when it comes about and God points to it, you will recognize His hand and His finger pointing to it. Yes. Amen? Everybody say, there's an appointment coming. Because every call is followed by an appointment. Yes. And we've got to prayerfully pursue our call. And patience is required. The timing of God. Be faithful where we are until God brings us to the opportunity of appointment and promotion. Because opportunities will come with faithfulness. Amen. Amen. David's a great example. Amen. Sometimes we're in between appointments. Amen? Hallelujah. Be patient. God will bring it about. Keep your appointment. Let me listen. Let me do, remember this statement. Keep your appointments with God and He will keep His appointments with you. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Look, look at 1 Kings chapter 19 with me. Hallelujah. 1 Kings 19. This is where Elisha or Elijah came and saw Elijah and recruited him. 1 Kings 19, verses 19 through 21. So he departed thence, talking about Elijah, and found Elisha, the son of Shaphan, who was plowing with his twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Now look, when you, the prophet of God comes and puts his mantle on you, that's as direct a call as you can ever have. Amen? And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled them with flesh with the instruments of the, of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Amen. You may feel like you're just plowing, but you have no idea who God may send across your path tomorrow. Amen. God may have a whole nother direction for your life, a whole nother anointing for your life. And let me just make a, 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 a long story short. How many of y'all know that when Elijah was taken up by the chariots of fire, his, his mantle fell, fell down and Elisha had stayed with Elijah? And Elijah kept telling me, why do you follow me? Because he knew he was about to be taken up uh, away from the earth. And, and he, said, he said, no, I will not leave you. And he said, this one thing I ask of you, that a double portion of your anointing will be given to me. 
And when Elijah was taken up with the chariots of fire, his mantle fell to the ground. And Elisha went and took that, that, that mantle, that, that cloak, and he went to the river Jordan, which Elijah had just split for them to come apart. The waters were back. And Elisha went over to the river of Jordan again and said, Where is the God of Elijah? Struck and the river parted. And all the prophets that had followed Elijah were over there viewing what had happened. To make a long story short, Elisha went on to do twice as many miracles as Elijah. Elijah did in his life. A double portion of that anointing was upon him. God had an appointment for his life. And he was plowing in the field before. But God sent. And there was timing. And he responded. And God used him mightily. Amen. He performed what God had appointed him to do. How many of y'all want to perform what God has appointed you to do? Be faithful with his appointments. You may not think they amount to much. Oh, but they do. They're important. And God will grow it and bless you. Then we get to the icing on the cake. After you're called and you respond to the call, you patiently pursue the call. And after God gives you an appointment, an opportunity, amen, to step into that, it will grow. It will be small. Begin, and then God will grow it in you. Amen? Yes. Then comes the greatest thing. Called, appointed, and anointed. The anointing is what breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing is what destroys the yoke. The anointing is what lifts burdens in people's lives. And whatever God has called us to do and appointed us to do, if we can do it with the anointing of God, then it's not just us doing it, it is God doing it through us. How many of y'all want to be anointed of the Lord for what He's called you and put you here to do? Amen. Once you've answered the call and been faithful with your appointment, God sends His anointing. What is the anointing? It is the evidence that you have been set apart. There's something different. And really, it's, it's the evidence of the Spirit of God at work in your life. Let me just sum it up right here. When you have the anointing of God on you for what you're doing, You're doing it with God's ability, not your own. Because there's things and results happening that you can't make happen. It is the presence of God causing it to happen. Amen? Amen. That's why when I really get in bind and I need something happen, guess who I call? The anointed prayers. Amen. Stand with me on this, will you? Amen. I want some anointing released. You know what anoint? Y'all remember when when Samuel anointed, literally anointed him with oil? It means he was covered with it. Amen. God wants to cover you with His ability to do some stuff. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why anoint. There's a difference. There's a difference in talented good music and anointed music. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We want the anointing above everything else. Yeah, we want to give our best and our talents and abilities to God to develop it and that God can be glorified the best we can. But let me tell you, without the anointing of God, it's all in vain. Amen? Preaching. Let me tell you, I preached in the anointing and out of the anointing. And I'd sure rather preach in the anointing. Amen? When God's present, hallelujah, things happen. Hallelujah. The anointing of God. Everybody say the anointing of God. It's God's ability on human flesh to fulfill a God-given task and appointment represented by the all. And it happens. When you're anointed, it just flows. Why do you put oil in your car? So that all that metal won't clank together and just go. But the oil creates it flowing and it goes smoothly. When you're anointed to do something, it just happens easily for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let it flow. The anointing makes it evidence that it is God doing it and not us. Hallelujah. What does the anointing do? Isaiah 10 and 27 tells us, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The greatest statement I ever heard about the anointing was out of the mouth of Jesus 
Turn over with me to Luke chapter 4. We're going to wind this down here. Luke chapter 4. How many of y'all are glad I, I'm not like some preachers that say, Now in closing... Because really, preachers have about five closings if they were honest. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen? So we're about to wind this down. Let me just say that. Amen? Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Ah, this is Jesus. Back up to 16. I always like to do that to my wife. She says, I write it down and then you change it. <laughs> <laughs> It says, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. As soon as, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue. He was a habit. It was a habit for him to go to church. As, a custom, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Listen, he's prophesying about himself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. And set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something. If Jesus need to be anointed, don't y'all think we need the anointing on our life. Hallelujah. And he was the anointed one. Everything he did was the, with the ability of God. And God gives us that same opportunity. That what we do in life, we do it with the anointing of God. God's ultimate reward for those that answer his call and to fulfill the assignment and to receive and operate in the anointing is this, Romans 8, 29, 31. You don't have to turn there. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, that he also called. And whom he called, that he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. It goes on to say, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. 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 Let me tell you, every one of us are predestined by God. God had it figured out. Jeremy had it figured out before you was born. I need him saved so he can fulfill what I told him to do. Al, before you was born, God already had the blueprint out that you, you'd had an intersection in life with Jesus to be in your life. You were predestined to that. It was up to you to find it and respond. But whom he predestined, them he also called put you in that position to call. And then he called, then he also justified. How many of y'all know the enemy is always trying to disqualify you? Yes. But God justified. He's, you're, he's, you're qualified. Yeah. Because I've called you. Whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. That's when the presence and the anointing of God are on your life. And your, the will of God is fulfilled in your life. You're all called. You all can be anointed of God. Yes. How many of y'all want to fulfill God's purpose in your life? Amen. Yes. Just as I end this, I wanted to share with you and remind you what Jesus prayed in the garden. He prayed, Father, I glorified thee on earth. I glorify me. God wants the glory of God on all of our lives. And he wants you to know that he has not called you to do anything he cannot do through you. I like the way one old cowboy minister used to say, God ain't going to call you to ride and not provide the horse. <laughs> Amen. God's made a way for you to do what he's called you to do. Don't push away. Don't push away the leadings drive of the Spirit of God. If you're alive and you're breathing, God's not finished with you right. yet. Amen. 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 See, the, the, you know how Rock Creek Church can be the greatest, 
that we can possibly be is that I'm not the only minister in the house. Every one of y'all are ministering to people. Every one of y'all have taken upon your heart to seed into every life you possibly can yeah. by what you've experienced and operate in the anointing of God. You know, there's anointed greeters. Amen? Over the years, I've had so many people tell me, man, I came because so-and-so greeted me at the door and and so-and-so and so-and-so. You know, I, I don't know whether Drew, I don't know if it was you and Kathy, somebody was telling me when you came, Mary Miller made yes. such an impression on them. Was it y'all? Yeah, it was said, man, I was greeted with such love. I said, man, right off the bat, it just opened us up to, to receive what was there. That's anointing, Mary. Thank Amen. Mary. Amen. God can anoint us to do different things. And God wants to fulfill what he's called you to do. Would y'all stand with me this morning? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Jacob, if you can come, I'd appreciate it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Quote it. said, Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Father God. Lord, that God, uh, there's purpose, God, for our lives. I thank you, Father God, that you've, you've sent and, and given us calling, God, for our life. And I thank you there's directives. God, there's help. There's an anointing, God, to go forth in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that today I believe that, Father God, there will be uh, limits taken off our eyesight. I believe today, God, that there will be uh, those that see things, God, that they did not see before. And I pray in the name of Jesus that there be an anointing, Father, release for today, Father God, of eye-opening. I pray eye-opening about your call, Lord, about your appointments, God, that we may head toward that place of anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, first and foremost right now, hallelujah, and let me just ask you this. Maybe you're here today and you're feeling the call of the Lord to make things right. It's the call of Jesus, the initial call of God to, to be saved or to rededicate your life. Say, I've got off track. I need to rededicate my life. Is anybody, would anybody raise your hand this morning and say, that is me. I need to answer the call of the Lord to, to put some things under the blood of Jesus and to get some things right with the Lord. Just lift your hand right now. That you, Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can put your hands down. Hallelujah. Thank God for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray together right now for those that need to just put some things under the blood. Get a fresh start right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that your forgiveness, your grace, and your mercy is ready and is here, God. Your cleansing is available to me. Lord, you see my heart. God, I want to do for you. I want to work for you. Lord, I ask you, help me to get myself out of the way. I ask you, Lord, right now, forgive me of all my sins, of all my failure. Cleanse me. Wash me by your blood. Make me new again today in the name of Jesus. And I'll live for you from this day forward, all the days of my life, with the help of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me, for putting under the blood all my sin and iniquity, for remembering them no more. And Lord, I determine to go forward clean and serve you. And I thank you, Lord, for a new, fresh beginning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God. Greatest thing we could ever do, answer the call of God in dealing with our own lives. Now, let me tell you real quick. I'm not going to hold you long, but there's a couple of things God has instructed me to do this morning. I want to right now pray quickly, and I won't hold you long. If you're here today and you say, I want that, what you talked about, Pastor. To the desire to seek God for what he had for my life. Amen. Who else? Say, I'm not sure about my call, call but I want to know my calling. I want to know my calling. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all bring it in here. Glory to God. Anybody else? Anybody else? Not sure what God has called you to, but you want to hear His voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I can be confident in this. When we call, when we pray about this matter, I'm 100% sure God's going to answer you. Amen. 100% sure. Amen. Why? Because you're seeking God's direction, and He will never remain silent. Now, hear me. You've got to listen with spiritual ears. Amen. 
God may, let me, He's going to confirm it by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Amen. If you feel a leading to do something, I've done this many times. You pray about it and ask God to confirm it. Amen. He'll send confirmations. Amen. More than anything else, you pay attention to the driving of the compassions in your heart and in your spirit. And God will lead you by that. Amen. Y'all remember when Jesus fed the multitude? It said He was moved with compassion. And he fed the multitude. Amen. What was that? There was a father calling him and directing him, appointing him, moving through him so he knew what to do. You know, I prayed for Gerald this morning. I didn't just come make a note. Well, I prayed for Gerald. No. All of a sudden, there was compassion for Gerald Bergen. I knew I had to pray for him. Amen. God directs us in our call in the very same way. Amen. Hallelujah. Donna, would you come here? Amen with me. And let's pray this morning. Amen. Now, we're just going to quickly lay hands on you. And I want you, as I pray for you, just lift your hands to the Lord as you're receiving from the Lord. Amen. And as we pray, we're going to just pray that God would order your thoughts, your steps, and your heart. That you'd receive the, the distinction and the, the description in your heart and your spirit in the days, months, maybe even years to come of that call in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands toward these this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Court and miss him, Bubba. We just release God, the call of God, right now for Bubba. I thank you. He recognizes God, the call of God. And I thank you, Father, for seeing it into him now in the name of Jesus. Release him, God, right now for Kate. Court and miss him, Bubba. Yombo or a big Samara, Dada Basso, or a Basamba Baka, Jayla Basso, Terabaka. Release it, Father God, right now. Or a big Samaba, Araba, let it flow, God. Let it be revealed, God, to my brother Nathan. Jesus' name. Okay, my son, right now for Christy. Oh God, let the call of God be evident, director, God, by your word, by your spirit, bring it about, quoted by your spirit. Oh, we pray for Katie right now in the name of Jesus. Loose forth, God, that which you have prepared, the road you have prepared for her in the name of Jesus to see your glory in her life. Oh God, let this little one, Lord, let Bodhi be called of God and receive your call. At a young age, he'd know God, the direction of God. In Jesus' name. I pray, Father God, for Jan right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, the director of the call will be downloaded to her. Let her be moved with compassion towards those things which you've called and recorded right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we pray for Jill right now. In Jesus' name. King Mondoro Bosso. Kamba Robo Ode de Bese. Epa Pokore de de Basara Ba Ode de Beke. Yumbo Sore de de Basara. Lord, we lose it for you. Thank you, God. For you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. For you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray for my sister right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan. Oh, God, you have a timing. And God, you have a future, God, in store. I pray, God, that you bring her back. Give her patience, Lord. Lord, as she seeks your face to wait on you, Lord, wait for sure step. And you're going to bring those shoe steps. And she's going to come. It's going to be evident, Father God, of the presence of God. We thank you, Father, for what you're releasing to her right now. Oh, Father, touch my sister. Thank you, Father God, for the anointing of God. Lord, that you preserve for her, that you have set aside for her. God, as you seek your face, Father, I thank you that you will bring it about with the desires of the Lord, God. You will bring it about that she will know, she will know, and she will see, God, that which you have for her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now just say this. Say, God, I receive it. Hallelujah. Say, I position myself for the download of your spirit that I will receive your call, receive your appointment, receive your anointing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's going to be interesting to see what God does for you. Amen. Now, before y'all step away, Jacob, you might as well put that guitar down, son. Hallelujah. I want to do one more thing. And only you can determine this. And this is not putting anybody on the spot. But I want to pray. Don, I want you to join me back up here if you will. If there's anybody in here that you feel called to five-fold ministry, teacher, evangelist, pastor, prophet, if you feel called in the five-fold ministry, I'm not saying that you're going to be full-time, and you might be. But if you feel called to that, Marla, you need to get up here. Amen. You too. But I can't make that call for you. 
I'm saying, do you have a desire? Is that, is that something in you that's welling up? If you're there here today and you have that, 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 do you feel that, that call in you to be in five-fold ministry? Will you come right now? I want to pray for you. You may be in this line need to step up. You don't know how God's going to do it. You don't know. But God's put that in your heart that you want to be a part of that. Amen. Would you step forward or, or join me up here? I want to pray for you. I definitely want to pray for y'all. Amen. If y'all would just stand right here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pay attention to what's going on because some of y'all may be in this line before this is over. Amen. Hallelujah. Say this with me again. Say, God's not finished with me yet. Hallelujah. God's not finished with me yet. Hallelujah. God's not finished with me yet. Hallelujah. Would you stretch your hands with me and Donna towards Martha and Jacob right now? Let's just uh, pray for the anointing of God. Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you, Father God, for the calling of God. Father God, that you've made evidence on Martin Jacob's life. God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Father God, oh, they would hear your voice, your direction every day, every hour. They would follow your timing, Father God, and they would be obedient to the heavenly vision which you give them. I thank you, Father God, that they will easily be able to determine and dif differentiate by the word of God, what is of them and what is of you. And Father, I thank you, Father God, that Lord, you're letting them know today that God, their future is intact. I thank you, Lord, you're letting them know today that you have some things set in order. God, as they follow you, you will develop it. You will appoint it. You will bring it about. And I thank you, Father God, for the grace of God, the empowering of God that sets upon them today. Father, I thank you, Lord, that today the enemy is defeated. And I thank you, Father God, there's a fresh anointing being set upon them right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father God, it to manifest. We pray that it would come forth with might and with power and strength. And Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring it about with great evidence of your power. We thank you, God, for it. We praise you for it. And we pray, Father God, that that anointing would just come forth. God, it would be undeniably you and everything they put their hand to do for you. We thank you for it. We praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now say this with me. Say, the Lord, the Lord is not through. In fact, He's just starting. And there are good things in my future that God will do through me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can go back to your seat. I'm going to dismiss you. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. About to let you go. About to let you go. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Faith. Can you come up here? Amen. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Lord wants me to tell you something. You have no idea the importance of what you do for the kingdom of God. God wants you to know he is so pleased with you and for you loving the word and not being afraid to express your faith. God says you've been named properly because you have affected more lives yes. than you can possibly imagine. Yes. And I believe from the spirit of God this morning that God is saying, because you have been faithful and little, I'm going to make you ruler of much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 The Lord bless my sister. Thank you, Father, for her heart before you. And thank you, Father God, Lord, that as she seeks your face, God, you're saying, God, that you have so much more for her. Bless her, Lord. Help her. Let her be encouraged today, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, the way heaven sees, oh, you see every detail in heaven, Lord, is goes much beyond what we see in the natural. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing.
We ask for your blessing and anointing on her. In Jesus' name. Everybody yes. say amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll say it one more time. The Lord, He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Amen. Say this. Say, I'm called, appointed, and anointed of the Lord. 